Welcome to the Story Selling Podcast. The show that explores the arts and science of authentic marketing for purpose-led entrepreneurs. With me, your host and founder of the Story Selling Lab, Rob Drummond. This episode of the Story Selling Podcast is sponsored by my agency, the Story Selling Lab, where I help purpose-led entrepreneurs to generate a consistent flow of great clients using LinkedIn ads without funding the big tech Christmas party. To learn more, head to storyselling.biz. On with the show. One of my earliest business mentors was and still is Perry Marshall. Perry, for the longest time, has been known as a Google as a Google Ads consultant. That was how I first entered his his world. Today, he has a more holistic business offering, but initially, it was Google Ads that attracted me to Perry. This was back in the earliest days of Google Ads. It maybe wasn't at the very beginning, so Google Ads launched in two thousand and two. But this was maybe 2005 where I first subscribed to Perry's email list. You know, it's been almost 20 years, I think. Back in 2005, Perry made a couple of predictions. One was that for everyone who was focused on tricking the search engines to generate organic rankings, for everyone who who relied heavily on SEO, his warning was do some paid ads as well. Because you never know when the algorithms are going to change and the tide might turn against you. And I heard that advice and I was like, yeah, right, Perry. Why would we pay for ads when we can just do SEO for free? Which sounds funny now, doesn't it? But that was my thinking at the time. A few years later, I was running paid ads because I'd realized, oh, actually, SEO has has gotten much harder. A lot of the big boys have caught up. It's no longer possible to rank organically by adding your keywords to the to the meta tags on your website or stuffing the pages full of keywords all of that stopped working so we started running ads and at the time clicks were quite cheap on the whole you might pay you know 10 pence 20 pence per click i remember in sort of 2006 2007 20 or 30 pence might have been quite expensive for a click. And I remember Perry saying at the time, make hay while the sun shines now because the click prices are going to go up. And once again, I went, okay, Perry, that's nice advice. I'm going to do something with that in 10 years time. 10 years later, of course, click prices had shot up through the roof. What was a 20 pence click was now a £2.50 click or £3.50 click which obviously vastly exceeds the rate of inflation. So he'd been there at the time. I was in there early on. He was there making warnings, making predictions. Those predictions did get my attention because I still I still remember them now. I remember them now to relate to you on this podcast almost 20 years later. So the prediction or warning template is something that you can use in creating your own ads. So in this series, we're focused on LinkedIn conversation ads which are linked in sponsored messaging ad format. And the template that we're looking at today is the prediction or warning where you open up your message and you make a prediction or give a warning that is going to be highly relevant to your target clients and only to your target clients and be a warning or prediction about something that they haven't necessarily thought of and something that you feel deep in your bones is most li- most likely to happen. This is the kind of ad that doesn't always work, but for the right markets, it can do. I'm thinking often of markets where there's a lot of mis- misconceptions. There's a lot of buyer confusion. In that situation, the prediction templates, a prediction or warning can work really well. We've also got a hark back here to the tragedy plot as well, which is a which is a plot structure we covered quite early on in the podcast, where if you work with clients and things can go quite wrong, 
So I, I worked a number of years ago with a client that trained mountain guides, and he told stories from the mountain face of people who fell to their deaths because they didn't master the art of anchoring onto creating a snow anchor, for instance. They didn't master the ropes well enough, and the consequences were terrible. So he told tragedy plots. There's an element of that where if things can go very, very wrong for your clients, I've got a client at the moment actually who works in the health and safety space. And again, the consequences of things going wrong can be bad. Those situations lend itself to the warning. Here's what can go wrong if you're not aware of this insight and your insight in the middle of the message then is you're shining the light of insight on something that they have missed. And then the call to action is you don't offer to solve that by offering them a template or offering them a guide or even just inviting them to subscribe to your email list. As always on the show, we're going to cover three ideas. The first idea is the spotlight. The second idea is measurability. And the third idea is a caveat. So let's jump in and have a look at the first idea. If you open a LinkedIn sponsored message by making a prediction or a warning, it has to be something that's a little bit unexpected. So this first idea is that we are shining the spotlight of insight on something that your ideal clients might be aware of, but they've probably missed or they've misread the situation. They've got some false assumptions that once you shine the light of insight and saying, actually, we've seen through our clients that this is a major problem. This this can go wrong if you don't do these certain things. You're shining the spotlight, but in a very specific way from a very specific angle on the problem that you solve. The prediction or warning doesn't work if it's too general. If I were to show up in your inbox as another marketer, and if I was to say, my prediction is that in 10 years time, marketing is going to be a reputable industry where people do not make false claims and people sell based on trust and people show up as themselves. That's kind of like this this nirvana of how I would like the world to work, but it's too broad and it's probably not believable because, because marketing appears to be an industry of charlatans. So. The spotlight needs to be quite focused. It's almost like a laser pen than a spotlight. You've got this laser pen and you're pointing to a very specific thing on what might be quite a complex diagram. And for the right person, you're saying, you've got this problem, but look, look at this specific thing. Here's what can go wrong if you don't address this now. Here are the consequences. Here are the stakes. The nice thing about adding in a warning to your message means that the stakes are higher. If you don't address this now, here are the consequences for for you, for your business. Obviously it depends on the nature of your business. If you service people at home, here's the consequences for your house, for instance. If you're a roofer, if, if your house was built before 1950 and you have a flat roof, here's something that you need to pay attention to right now. So the first idea was the spotlight, but making the spotlight as specific as possible. Don't make it too general. This isn't a wide spotlight. This is a laser pen spotlight, but you're lasering in on one specific thing that your ideal client needs to know and will almost certainly have missed. And knowing about this can have a big impact on their future results. So what is that one insight? It might take you a bit of time to figure out what that insight is. It might come up straight away, but for a lot of people, it might be, okay, you need to go and do some real thinking about this. You might need to go and speak to a few clients and figure out what it is. So do some hard thinking. Speak to some people as well, either in your teams, if you have teams, or go and speak to a few clients. The second idea then is measurability. So if you're making a prediction, it helps that if the prediction is actually measurable against an outcome. So the reason that Perry Marshall's predictions stuck in my head was because he predicted that click prices on Google were going to exponentially increase. Now, we didn't put a dollar amount on that, but it is a measurable 
thing now where I can look back and say, oh, you know, 15 years ago, I was paying 30 pence a click and now I'm paying three pounds 50 a click. So, so the proof is in the pudding and it's, it's very clear that it is measurable that he was correct and I was not. And that to me now adds much more proof and trust to him as one of my trusted advisors, let's say. But it does help if the prediction that you're making is measurable in the future. If you're just saying, I predict that in five years, marketing will be a trustworthy business. It's quite ambiguous. It's quite vague. How are you going to measure that? What are you going to look back on and say, oh yeah, actually Rob was right. It's much better if I can say, this time in two years, 70% of your budget will be spent on LinkedIn ads. 70% of your advertising budget will be spent on LinkedIn ads. And half of that will be spent on sports and messaging ads. That's, that's my prediction. That's very specific. And it's also measurable because you can look back in two years or three years or whatever the time frame is and say, well, was I right? So have a think about making predictions that you can be held account- accountable to. Because when you're right, and hopefully you will be right, lends credibility to you. But also when you're making the prediction in the first place, it adds believability because you can be measured against these things. So it almost puts a bit of skin in the game. You're making a prediction and it's easy, it's easy for people receiving the prediction to measure you against that outcome. The third idea I want to look at is the caveat. You might include a caveat in your message where you say, here's what could go wrong if you don't follow certain things. Or in my world, it might be, my, my, my prediction is that LinkedIn ads will be a colossal waste of money if you follow LinkedIn's default budget recommendations and if you use inappropriate ad formats using inappropriate campaign objectives that often are the campaign defaults. So there are certain caveats to the warning happening. This outcome will happen if you miss certain things, if you do certain things. Often the caveat is about them not doing certain things rather than them actually doing something. If you ignore X, Y, and Z, here's what can go wrong. And again, adding in these caveats allows you to make the warning that you're making or the prediction much more specific because you're adding some nuance because then you're not saying this is going to happen all of the time to everyone in this market. You're saying this is going to happen under these circumstances. If you ignore X, Y, and Z, then you might find yourself left behind in your marketplace, for instance. Have a think about what the criteria are for your warning coming true. Because then even if even if your warning doesn't come true across the board, that actually doesn't matter so much because it was about the criteria. It was about the it was about the caveats. It was about the if people didn't if you if you don't do this, then why is it going to happen? In summary, then, the prediction or warning template is essentially opening your ad with a story of change. So this makes it a good template to use. If you can see certain changes that are happening in your marketplace that your potential clients might not be able to see, you have better visibility into what is going on than they do. So what is it that you can see that they need to see that they might not be aware of? It helps too if there is a newsworthy element to the message because obviously news helps to capture people's attention. I would capture more attention with my ads if I made the prediction that in five years' time, AI is not going to be used to write the majority of emails that you see from people that you trust because AI and chat GPT and all, all of these things are newsworthy things that in some respects, I think, I mean, they won't go away, but we'll figure out what their true use case actually is. Whereas at the moment, people seem to think that their true use case is everything and that copywriters are somehow going to be made redundant. And that 
obviously isn't the case, but it just changes having a new tool in the toolbox. My prediction actually is that having a new tool in the toolbox will change the way that a copywriter works. It will change the way that your workflow works. It means that you can capture the voice of your clients authentically much faster. That actually is a prediction that I could use in one of my, one of my LinkedIn ads. So have a think about as well, what is newsworthy to your ideal clients? Because if you can include an aspect of newsworthiness, that's going to help to join a conversation that is already going on in their head. And that's how you get attention with your ad. Once you join the conversation going on in, in their head, you can then transition that conversation to your offer, which might be your lead magnet or just offering, asking people to, to subscribe and enter your world. I think that the prediction or warning template is definitely relevant to businesses where things can go very wrong, but have a think about it. You know, whatever your line of work, there's always consequences for people if they get things wrong. And it could be that they go and work with the wrong provider and end up with a certain outcome, or it could be that they do nothing and end up with a certain outcome. You can make the warning from different angles as well. The three ideas that we've covered on this episode have been the spotlight in terms of shining your pen lights of insight on a very specific thing that is going to have relevance to your ideal clients. The second idea was measurability, was making a prediction or a warning that is going to be measurable, that you could be held accountable to, because that's going to build trust in your prediction. The third idea was including caveats of saying, your prediction is only going to happen if certain things are in place if certain things are true. And these things being true should be highly relevant. And again, we come back back to this word of relevance. They should be highly relevant to your ideal clients and not anyone else. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Story Selling Podcast, please do subscribe to podcast notifications at storyselling.biz forward slash podcast. You can also subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app. And please do leave us a review. The main ones are Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you don't have a copy of my book, Simple Story Selling, you can grab a copy at storyselling.biz forward slash book. You can also search on Amazon for Simple Story Selling. And if you would like help with your LinkedIn ads, head to storyselling.biz forward slash LinkedIn hyphen ads. We are nearly at the end of this series on LinkedIn conversation ads. Next week will be our final episode where we look at what I call the two-step template. So I'll explain what the two-step template is next time. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Story Selling Podcast, you'll want to make sure you're on my email list. Head to storyselling.biz forward slash podcast, where you can opt in to future episode notifications and also download my lead incubator blueprint. You can also find my book, Simple Story Selling, on Amazon in paperback and Kindle formats. Thank you for listening, and I'll speak to you next time.